supposed to be able to smile and able to say thank you for coming. I appreciate that you come to visit me. You come out of that hospital, you say, if those people can be cheerful in their condition, as terrible as their conditions are, I think I can be cheerful because what is happening to me is nothing. Do you understand? We read in the papers and we see the things that happen. And we see what happens to, you know, the people either a storm comes and, you know, devastates a, a whole region, a whole community. Or it may be that people have gone to, you know, the war zone and about three children of the same parents, they've been to war and they're all dead and gone. And their parents are still alive. And their parents are still breathing. And their parents are still living their lives. And they're not killing themselves because of that. Sometimes uh, one of their children has gone to school. And because of an erratic, uh, centric a child that carried a gun or knife, that child, one of the children, was already dead. And then they just brought information to the parents at home that this is gone. And eventually, the, those parents, they sum up courage. They say, well, we don't know why that happened, but we're going to live our lives. And some of them are unbelievers. They do not know the Lord. And they sum up courage, and they still live, even with those calamities. When you think about what happens to other people, and what a fraction, one-tenth or one-hundredth of it has not happened to you, then you say, well, there's nothing to complain about. And on, on, when you think about it, I have God on my side, I have the word of God on my side, I have the Holy Spirit within me. And if that is the case, then I can live and I can rejoice in the Lord. That's why it says, be strong and fear not. We will not fear. I said, we will not fear. In that verse 4, it says, behold, your God will come with vengeance. Even God with a recompense, he will come and save you. If the people that do not have that promise, if they can still live a kind of confident life, how about those of us that have the promise of God that God will come, he will save us, he will definitely come. He said, we should be strong, take courage, and not be afraid. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 8. Isaiah chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 11. Isaiah 8, verse 11. For the Lord spake thus unto me with a strong hand, and instructed me that I should not walk in the way of these people, saying, Say ye not, a confederacy, to all them to whom these people shall say, a confederacy, neither fear ye their fear, nor be afraid. Neither fear ye their fear. If the people of the world that do not have God, if they are afraid, and they have a kind of fear, it says, don't fear like them. You have a God who is your father. You have Jesus as your Redeemer. And you have the Holy Spirit who lives within you and abides within you. And you have the promises of God. And those promises of God are still yes and amen. Do not forget that, that you are not alone. I will be with you till the end of the world. In Isaiah chapter 41, I'm reading from verse 10. Isaiah 41, reading from verse 10. It says in verse 10, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. If the Lord is with you, anything to fear? You know, as I, as I read about uh, Joseph, uh, Joseph uh, was uh, the man, that the young man that had, uh, what did he have? Tell me out. Some of you are sleeping. I said, what did Joseph have? He had a dream. And as he saw that dream, now I want you to think, now we can, we can go back to the scriptures and we can think, we can reason. He told his brothers the dream. Because of that, they hated him. Does that hatred, is that hatred strong enough to cancel the dream? Not when God has given the dream. That's why we don't worry about the hatred and about what everybody might plot. And now here he was coming. Here comes the dreamer. Let us kill him. Wait, let's kill him. Will they be able to kill him? If they killed him, how will the word of God be fulfilled? Will they be stronger than God? They cannot be stronger than God. And eventually, they said, okay, don't kill him. They'll change their mind. I said they'll change their mind. And then, eventually, they put him in the pit. The Ishmaelites were coming. And he said, hey, we know what we're going to do. There's no point killing this young man. We're going to sell him to the Ishmaelites. And they sold him to the Ishmaelites. And the Ishmaelites took him where? 
it took him to the place where the dream will be fulfilled. And, but he didn't have to pay the fare to go there. He had free transportation to go there. God knows what he's doing. And if you understand what actually happened, and there was nothing wrong in what happened. Yes, those people had the intention. They knew what they wanted to do, but it was just free transportation. And then eventually, he was uh, in Potiphar's house. And the Bible says, and God was with him. Because he himself, he was with God. He said, there is nothing to fear. I'm going on a journey, and this happens to be a milestone. If you understand that everything that happens to you in life is just a milestone, and then you go to the next milestone, but you say the Potiphar's wife told a lie against him, and they put him in the prison. Hey, what are you thinking about that? You know what they should have done? He was just a slave. His mother was not there. His father was not there. And the masters of those days, they had the power of life and death. They could have killed him. They didn't kill him. And they sent him to prison. But Joseph, are you not sad? Are you not worried and fearful now? See what is happening. They sent you to prison. He said, sir, do you know the kind of prison they sent me to? VIP prison. Where the servants of Pharaoh, where they were. If they sent me to another kind of prison, how would I be able to see those people and interpret their dreams for them? God is on time. This is another milestone. And then he interpreted the dreams. After interpreting the dreams, he told one of them, he said, you are going to be set free. Just three days. Remember me as you get over there. And then the man got there. Did he remember him? Isn't that a tragedy? No, that's not a tragedy. You know why? If the man remembered him, when Pharaoh did not have any dream, and he just released Joseph, they released him into nothingness. They must release him at the right time. Now Pharaoh had a dream. And the man said, now I remember. That's the right time to remember Joseph. And then he came, and eventually jo Joseph interpreted Pharaoh's dream. And then Pharaoh said, can we find any other man? apart from this man and then the dream became fulfilled meanwhile there was famine in the land where the brothers were and they came he recognized them you will recognize them and they fell on the ground they said we are your servants and joseph he knew the dream was fulfilled when God has given a word, all the enemies will do is just to send you milestone after milestone in the direction of the fulfillment of the dream. That's the reason why we don't fear anything. We say whatever is happening today or whatever happened yesterday, everything is going to lead us to the climax when the dream will be fulfilled. If you understand that, in fact, is, we will do less of casting out. Oh, if, what, what, what if Joseph had been praying? Oh God, these my brothers change their mind. No, don't change their mind, God. Because they are the instruments God will use to send you to the place of the fulfillment of the dream. Oh, Lord, look at this Potiphar's wife and look at all this. All this big lie he, she wants to tell against me. Please, don't let him tell a lie. You have received the message. From our pastor, Pastor W.F. Kumoye, the General Superintendent of the Palais Bible Church. It is my wish that as you listen, you accept the old world and you will let them sink into the, your hearts. And by the grace of the Lord, you will never regret it. It is my prayer that by next week, when our pastor shall come up again to present another message, you will be there, your family will be there, and your friends. And I believe as you are listening to the message every week, by the grace of the Lord, you will never be the same. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, O Lord, because of today's message. We thank you, O Lord, because of the one you let us listen to last week and the one we are going to listen to the next week by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. If you tarry, we shall listen together once again next week. And if not, every one of us will be there with you in the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because you are the Lord that answers prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.